Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see you all again from Monday to Saturday at 6 p.m. The Daily Current Affairs premiere. But yesterday, due to certain reasons, I wasn't able to continue with this class. But do not worry. Whatever we have missed of importance yesterday, I have incorporated it today. And that is the beauty of this class that you will not miss out on anything. So before I begin, I would like to tell you that please do not worry about taking notes because notes will be provided through my Telegram channel, Pooja Devi UPSC. If you have any queries regarding this examination. Do talk to me on my Instagram and follow me on my threads. These are the various events that we have to cover. I gave you a practice question. Kula Sekara Pattinam in Tamil Nadu often seen in the news is abuzz again. What is it? An ancient port, new launch path of Istro, geological timeline site or none of the above. There seems to be certain confusion between these two particular um, options, A and B. It's an ancient port for sure. And it will take two years for it to become new launch pad of Isro. So right now it's not new launch pad of Isro. It is an ancient port as of now. So this is correct. A option. We already have Shri Harikota in uh, you know one of our launch pads. But it is so burdened. We are looking for some other launch pad as well. For better missions. And for more missions to take place. So we are looking for Kula Sekara Pattinam in Tamil Nadu. And that is why it is important for us to know about it. Because government approved this the establishment of a new space fort here only for SSLVs. Why we are only looking for space ports to the south of the equator in India? Because whenever any space load is launched, any spacecraft is launched, it carries itself with itself the launch vehicle. Of course, launch vehicle is supposed to carry the spacecraft. So when it actually delivers the payload, the launch vehicle starts collapsing on itself and then falling back to the earth. We do not want anybody to get hurt. That is why we are using this region so that whenever due to the presence of forces, if the vehicle comes down, then it collapses and lands in the ocean region and not in any continent hurting people. All right. Moving on. Kula Segura Patnam is a town in the Thudukudi district of Tamil Nadu and it's an ancient port dating back to 1st century AD at the same time of Kollam, Cheran and Pandyan ports. With respect to India's first regional rapid transit system, consider the following statements. It's capable of running at speeds of up to 180 km per hour. It's an integrated mass transit network. It was conceptualized in the year 2005-2006 and it will cater to commuters who want to travel relatively in a short span of time to longer distance. So what do we have to see? How many of the statements given above is or are not correct? Recently, today itself, the Indian Prime Minister inaugurated the Namo Bharat after Vande Bharat. So this Namo Bharat is nothing but a rapid regional transit system. Rapid means fast, regional means pertaining to a region. Transit means to transport. System is of course the uh, interaction of everything together. So rapid regional transport system, whichever train will come under it, it will be named as Namo Bharat. And I've covered this in detail, the features of it. We already have a metro. Why do we even need RRTS? Because it is better than metro in terms of speed. When we talk about Delhi Metro specifically, it can travel up to 100 km per hour to 120 km per hour. But if we talk about RRTS, it is capable of doing that till up to 180 km per hour. Range, uh, generally, it will travel at the speed of 160 km per hour. But it has a capacity which goes higher than the Metro. And that is why this particular is better. This particular system is much better for that from that perspective. And it's an integrated mass transit system. It was conceptualized through a study by the Indian Railways in the year 1998-1999. The conceptualization when it was reconsidered, it was in the year 2006. First is correct, second is incorrect because here it is written, it was conceptualized in 2005-06. It will cater to commuters who want to travel to longer distance in a short span of time. Yes, the so first is correct, third is correct, second is not correct. One only will be the correct answer. Moving on, India's first RRTS has been inaugurated. This was done for a 17 km stretch which was named as a priority section for the 82 km stretch of Delhi Ghaziabad Meerut transit system, corridor system. And the entire 82 km of corridor for this particular corridor system will be completely operational by the year 2025. There are 8 corridors through which the regions of Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi will be connected because this is for Delhi NCR and these eight corridors will be developed in a phase wise manner. In phase one, three corridors will be developed. Moving on, RRTS project is a semi high speed rail connectivity to its core. It's an integrated mass transit network which aims to ensure that people not only depend on their private vehicles 
but they get nudged towards using sustainable public transport system so that carbon footprint can get reduced through better connectivity and access across the NCR. Indian Railways was commissioned to carry a study in order to understand the networking for such system in 1998-1999 and this proposal was reconsidered in the year 2006. To also, when we saw that Delhi Metro got extended in Gurgaon, Noida, Ghaziabad, we could also think for such, a, a, such an RRTS. So, when this proposal was all done, the NCRPB, National Capital Region Planning Board undertook it, recommended that yes, we can develop it in eight corridor manner. And who is responsible for establishing it and implementing it? The National Capital Region Transport Corporation, which is a joint venture between the central government and the governments of Delhi, Haryana, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. It comes under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Okay, moving on. When compared with the metros, it's much faster. It will cater to commuters who want to travel in uh, for a longer distance in short sp uh, span of time. With respect to the Gyan Sahayak scheme, consider the incorrect statement. It is for government and grants in its schools, especially for mission schools of excellence. This is a scheme of the government of Gujarat. And sometimes UPSC can ask you state-specific schemes as well. Because seldom it happens that the union government can get inspired by state-specific schemes. That is why. To be a Gyan Sahayak in primary school, the, exam the candidate should have cleared the Gujarat Examination Board conducted Teacher's Ability Test, TET2. With the implementation of the Gyan Sahayak scheme, all resolutions for Pravasi Shikshaks are to be cancelled and a primary school Gyan Sahayak is eligible for a salary of 15,000, secondary one is for rupees 20,000. Actually, A, B, C, all three are correct because this is a highly conceptual, uh, highly factual question. So, I do not have anything to, you know, explain over here. But yes, a primary Gyan Sahayak is, is eligible for 21,000 and not 15,000. I will tell you about this as well. So, D is going to be the correct one. The scheme aims to fill vacancies in government school and the teachers will be hired on a contractual basis until and unless more permanent seats are created. And this is one of the reasons why there is a lot of controversy for it. The Gyan Sahayak scheme is for government and grant in aid schools, specifically for mission schools of excellence. And 15,000 Gyan Sahayaks in primary schools will be recruited, 11,500 in secondary and higher secondary. A primary school Gyan Sahayak is eligible for a salary of 21,000, secondary 24,000, higher secondary 26,000 per month. Primary school for primary school, if a person wants to become a uh, Gyan Sahayak for primary school, then the candidate should have cleared the Gujarat Examination Board conducted Teacher's Ability Test 2. Secondary and higher secondary Gans Hayek's teacher aptitude test cleared candidates can appear. The temple which in the 19th century recognized by the European sailors as White Pagoda now proudly displays the natural colours of the Khondalite stone that has been used by Anant Varma to construct the home of the Lord in the 10th century. So which of the following temple is being referred to in the statement? We are clearly referring to by this name White Pagoda and Khondalite stone and Anant Varma we can understand that we are talking about Sri Jagannath Temple. Right now, the Ratna Bhandar room of the Jagannath Temple, which was shut approximately 8, 38 years ago, people are asking it to reopen. And there is a problem. Nobody knows where the key is. <laughs> this is one of the issues. Also, people believe that if that door gets open, some kind of, uh, you know, catastrophe could come. And there is a lot of intermixing of legal complications, cultural belief system that is why this Ratna Bhandar which seems to have a lot of gold jewels, silver jewels, gems packed in itself this is in question. So the Sri Jagannath temple of Puri is dedicated to Lord Jagannath the Lord of the world a form of Vishnu and from 10th century onwards there was a there was a finding that this place had a temple before. So King Anantavarman Chodha Ganga Dev first of the Eastern Ganga dynasty started building it as in commissioned its building and the, it is very famous this temple is very famous for annual Rath Yatra or chariot festival the biggest thing to know about this temple is that generally we see in Hindu temples there is a presence of metal or stone idol but if we talk about Sri Jagannath temple the idols are made up of wood and is ceremoniously placed every 12 or 19 years by an exact replica moving on the temple which is recognized 19th century was because of the coverage of limestone 
it used to look like white pagoda in 1975 the archaeological survey of india undertook a task to remove this plaster of limestone and reveal the proper design and this was a two decade job after that we could see the natural colors of the khondalite stone anant verma used to construct the home of the lord in 10th century so khondalite stone these kind of small bits and pieces of the question you have to remember what is it made of puff because prelims can ask us that as well with reference to the multilateral development banks consider the following statements these are institutions whose members are included only from developing countries these banks fulfill certain lending obligations to facilitate developmental objectives developing countries primarily borrow from these institutions to fund development projects so how many of the statements given above is or are correct do you know that a lot of clamor is growing for reformation in multilateral institutes in multilateral lending banks such as world bank that we need reform so that is why multilateral development banks are in the news so these are institutions whose members are not only including developing countries but also developed countries the first statement is incorrect and these banks fulfill certain lending obligations to facilitate developmental objects if any project is important for the development of that country then that project will be undertaken undertaken with the help of lending from these these particular banks developing countries primarily borrow from these institutions to fund development projects secondarily they can also borrow for some other sanction projects the first is incorrect second and third are correct two only will be the correct answer a g20 expert panel has been formulated to call for reforms in the multilateral development banks to shift away from financing individual projects and we can also get amount sanction for developing sector focus programs and long term transformation plans identified by the national government multilateral development banks are institutions whose members include multiple developed and developing countries and lending obligations to facilitate developmental objectives funding and technical help to governments and organizations transportation energy urban infrastructure waste management these are the kind of projects they undertake typically rich nations contribute to the loan pool there is a pool that is created and rich nations contribute here from this the developing countries can borrow to support their developmental projects consider the following oil seeds groundnut soya bean sunflower canola how many of the above oil seeds are covered under the minimum support price minimum support price is like a safety net in case of any bumper production which generally happens for india what happens is the supply is too much demand is not so much there is a gap what happens that the prices will come down when prices will come down it will hurt the farmers so the government comes in with this intervention that whatever they produce may be i am here to help you i will put this mark that i will definitely buy your supplies or your crops at this particular price so this is msp okay msp is like a security net that is by the intervention of the government of india no matter what the price is but we are here to buy your food crops or your produce at this rate so you do not have to worry about it it's like an insurance money so groundnut soya bean and sunflower are covered but not canola so three only will be the correct answer increase in wheat msp punjab farmers reject height for rabi crops as peanuts minimum support price is a form of market intervention done by the government of india to inaugurate to ensure agricultural produce against any sharp fall in the prices and it is done by the government of india on the recommendation of commissions of agriculture cost and prices cacp and the minimum support prices are announced by the government of india at the beginning of the sowing session for specifically 23 crops crops which are covered by msps include seven types of cereals paddy wheat maize bajra jowar ragi and barley five types of pulses are there chana arhar aur tur urad moong and masoor seven oil seeds rape seed mustard saf flour groundnut soya bean sunflower sesame and niger seed then four commercial crops such as cotton sugarcane copra and raw jute with reference to indian rhinos consider the following statements the indian rhino is listed as endangered in the iucn red list manas national park has the highest number of indian rhinos indian rhinos have been poached for their horns rhino horn is used in traditional chinese medicine to uh, you know cure a range of ailments so how many of the statements given above is or are correct it is not manas national park but kaziranga that has the highest number of indian rhinos and it is listed as vulnerable in the iucn red list not endangered so first and second are incorrect 
and indian rhinos have been poached for their horn that is correct because the horn is used in traditional chinese medicine from uh, if we talk about curing it could be either cancer or something else as well so for a range of ailments it is used in vietnam it is also used as a status symbol so first and second are incorrect third and fourth are correct two only will be the correct answer two indian rhinos have found a home in the zoo of mexican city of guadal guadalajara as you can see here is guadalajara they have been put here in order to promote their reproduction and conservation in the face of their imminent extinction this is the only one in the country that will house specimens of their species rhinochorus unicornis remember that that means one horn the rhinochorus uh, rhinochorus uh, unicornis is indian rhino of course it is generally found in brahmaputra valley here is the brahmaputra valley north north nepal and some areas of no, uh, sorry south nepal some areas of north bengal and it has a single black horn that may grow up to 60 cm long it has a strong gray brown hide looks like an armor as you can see and this is the horn which they are poached for the indian rhino is listed as vulnerable in the iucn red list moving on the wwf has said that recovery of the greater one horn rhino is the most or the greatest conservation success story in asia there are approximately 3700 indian rhinos in the wild today assam's kaziranga national park alone has 2630 animals according to a census that was carried out in 2022 they have been poached for their horns which is a prized possession in certain cultures and of course they can cure hangovers cancers sometimes they are also used as aphrodisiacs in vietnam it is also considered a status symbol this is a practice question for you with respect to white phosphorus consider the following statements irish nationalist in the late 19th century first used it in a formulation that became known as fenian fire upon exposure white phosphorus can cause severe burns often down to the bone it is not considered a chemical weapon so how many of the statements given above is or are correct you have to choose okay please answer me in the comment segment due to paucity of time we are not taking your names today but in the next segment i will do it for sure thank you so much for watching stay updated